Okay, is everybody ready? Okay, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so... Um, we're going to, I still haven't got this thing set up cor correctly. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So yesterday was interesting because what I normally do is I change the font to 20 font at six pages and I left it at 12 font at six pages. So we did a lot yesterday. I was wondering why it sounded like a chip on me. <laughs> I really, I really, I'm really sorry about that. But again, I guess God wanted us to have more time today. That's something I could figure out. Um, the, the divine will is everything. It is uh, the gift of gifts. It's the prodigy of prodigies. And with this, the kingdom is going to be established on earth as it is in heaven. And our Lord is asking us, pleading with us, uh, to begin to understand this, this life, this light, this love of God. And as we said yesterday, the divine will is God. It's not a uh, devotion, it's God. And, and why is this so different? It, it's because time has now come to an end. The, the new era has begun and God wants us to get ready for sanctification. And what is sanctification? We enter into God's image and likeness again, the, and all that Adam lost. So this new beginning for all of humanity is ours and what the Lord is asking of us to do is to really begin to embrace this new and divine way of holiness. And, and it's not, you can't find it in the saints. It's, it's not saintly. It's beyond saintly. It's, it's, it's a, a new beginning that our God has uh, given to humanity through Louisa. So this, this gift of gifts, this prodigy of prodigies is ours. It's, it's ours. It's, it's so, Jesus says, as soon as you want it, you have it. But you don't have the fullness of it. He says, as soon as you want the divine will, you conceive Jesus in your heart. And once Jesus is conceived in your heart, Jesus now wants us to give birth to him. Okay, not, not the way Our Lady did. So how does this... this desire become God? How does this desire reign in us as Lord, as Savior, as King? It depends on the acts that you do. The more acts that you do in the divine will, the more particles you get, like, a, like it's a, another molecule that you add to the body of Christ, which is within you. Another molecule is, is he's being conceived in you. Um, so the more that we, we read, the more that we study, the more that we put into practice, the more we'll be able to give birth to Jesus. And how do we give birth to Jesus? It's Jesus, breathe in my breathing, beat in my heart beating, gaze in my gazing, listen in my listening, walk in my walking. I want you to be the Lord of my life in everything that I think, say, and do. So that's why we begin every morning with a prevenient act. We, our prevenient act is to say to the Lord, I, I don't want to do anything today, humanly. I only want to do everything divinely. And the only way we can do a divine act is through Jesus Christ. He's, he's the God. He's our God. He's the one that does the act. So when people say, oh, I'm going to pray my rounds. I said, well, you're not, you're not doing what God wants. Well, I'm praying in the rounds. No, you're not doing what God wants. It's the rounds that Jesus went through. How did Jesus live how did Jesus gaze? How did Jesus listen? How did Jesus' heart beat? How did, how did he breathe? It's, it's to allow God to reign, to be the Lord of our life in all that we think, say, and do. So this, this is the reason why the divine will is so magnificent. It's not trying to be a saint, like St. Saint Francis. I want to be a copy of St. Francis. I want to be a copy of St. Teresa. I want, I want to be like them. That, that's why the religious order started. I remember telling Mother uh, Gabriel when she was starting her new order, I said to her, you know, in the divine will, there will be no religious order. She goes, what? 
this is, this is important. I said, it's important for now, but not for the new era. We're going to be in God's image and likeness. We're going to live the life that Adam and Eve lived. It's a new beginning for humanity, which is really not new. It was given to Jesus. It was given to uh, Adam, but he never possessed it fully. He had to be tested, and he failed. He listened to Lucifer. He didn't listen to God. And all that God said was, don't eat of the tree in the front center of the garden. Don't eat of that fruit, the knowledge of good and evil. And the evil one comes and says, well, because God knows that if you eat it, you'll become him. You'll become a god. He lied. And that's, that's why a lot of these religions, it, it says that you, you will be gods. You know, what Jesus wants is he wants to be the Lord of our life so that we can experience his life, his perfect human life. So the more that we do our prevenient act in the morning than our actual acts throughout the day, the more we are peaceful, joyful, and happy, uh, the more we're living heaven. And, and when we live heaven, nothing can bother us. Now you'll get annoyed, you'll get, you'll get upset, you'll get worried, but it's just, it's, it's a bump in the road. You, you go back to being peaceful, joyful, and happy. You go back to be living the life the true life of Jesus, because he said, Jesus said to Louisa, uh, if you're not peaceful, I am not there. It's, he says, I am peace, I am joy, I am happiness. And when you possess that, you possess me. And I, Jesus says, I want to be with you in every moment of your life. Not only that, I want to repair and redo everything that you thought, everything that you said, everything that you did. See, Jesus says to Louisa, when the kingdom comes, it's going to look as if Adam never sinned, which means we never sin. Everything is going to be repaired as if we never sinned. Everything is going to be redone as if we never were out of the will of God. This is the reason why heaven is going to be so beautiful, because our job is to be the Lord's job on Calvary, our lady's job on Calvary. Repairing and redoing in the name of everyone and everything. So he gives us a lifetime to go through, not only our life, but everyone else's life. Family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, parishioners, but everyone, every human being that ever existed, ever lived. So he's, he's got such great plans for us, and he needs us just to say, yes, fiat. And that's, that's the beauty. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, um, it's the will of God. And he, he wants you to experience all the I love you's in creation. And now because of Jesus and Mary, all the I love you's of redemption. So it's this gift of gifts, this prodigy of prodigies is ours, but we're being tested every minute throughout the day. You know, do you get annoyed often? Do you get do you upset often? Do you worry often? That's a demon that you're feeding. You're keeping it alive by worrying, by being fearful, by being anxious and complaining and negative. And you have to cast that demon out. How? No, it's just, no, I'm not going to worry. I trust in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I hope in Jesus. I have confidence in Jesus. This, this is why, like we said last night, when you go in front of the Blessed Sacrament, it's not to read a book. You know, Hi, it's like going to your grandmother's house. Hi, Graham. <laughs> Bye, Graham. Nice visit. It's 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 to to be with Jesus, to fall in love with Jesus, to look at Jesus, to see Jesus. See, it's uh, we 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 can see God. That's what it says. The pure of heart will see God. And scripture says, no man can see God and live, but we're going to see him. We're going to see the blessed mother. We're going to see the, the beatific vision. We're going to participate in the beatific vision. So we have to get to that goal. And, and the goal is every day, Jesus speaking to us, teaching us, leading us, guiding us, directing us to, to begin to live this abundant life. So where we're going to start today is, uh, oh, this, this is, this is, uh, the, the, the woman who trans, translated all 36 volumes, I met her in Temecula, 
uh, in uh, when we were doing a retreat uh, in 1996, 1996 uh, with Acuna. We were we were giving a retreat with Acuna, and uh, this this tiny little Italian girl was there, and I said, "Do you speak Italian?" She goes, "See." Sí. So I said, would you help translate? And I, she said, I would give my life to do this. And she, she studied at Harvard. Uh, she had a good degree at Harvard. She uh, knew English fluently and Italian because she's from Puglia. She knew the dialect. She told me that when she reads Luisa, she hears her grandmother speaking to her. She hears, she hears what she is saying. Like for example, the preacher, Pretura, is a it's a it's a sign that the, uh, the 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 people when they saw a baby fall on the ground and is pleading pick up the little creature he, bring that little creature heal that little creature so that's how Jesus talked to her it was the the baby that was wounded so when you see when you see the word pretura it doesn't mean a monster somebody said that to me once I'm not a monster I said well, you sound like a monster. <laughs> It's, it's the baby that has fallen, the baby that is pleading, the baby that is wounded. And see, Jesus knows how wounded we are. Each and every one of us are wounded, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. We're all wounded. No, no, no human being was ever loved perfectly except for Jesus and Mary. They were the only two that were loved perfectly. And with, with our parents, our, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, our uncles, our aunts, our, the, the families that we were born in, raised in, everybody's wounded. Everybody's wounded. And Jesus says, I want everyone to be healed. And it's a divine healing that's coming. So this, this girl, she would always, when, when she would write uh, to me, she would always write, continuing on. Continue on. And I, th this, is, this is the reason she would write it. She's out of all the 36 volumes that she knows, she, she, she translated one through 36. And then when we got the writings from uh, Trani, she translated then one through 36 again. And then after she got through it, she said, you know, I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't understand it clearly. So now she translated it a third time. And what the Archbishop told us is we have the best translations that are out there in English. And that's what you're going to be confident of. There are some translations that, like, for example, the original volume seven was translated from Italian to Portuguese, from Portuguese to Spanish, from Spanish to English. And it was a mess. Because if you miss the wrong, if you miss a word, and you can very easily, uh, it's another translation. It's a whole different volume. So that's why the Archbishop says there's no official translations yet. So that's not to get upset about, but they're focusing on, I remember the, uh, the Cardinal back in 2015, I think he said to the Archbishop, he says, we want these in all languages. And the Archbishop nodded his head, you know, yes. Uh, and then he died. So... So he was a good. He was a good man, a very holy man. Uh, the 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 archbishops there are astonishing. Archbishop Carada, he studied Luisa when he was a seminarian, and uh, he he was he to be found as archbishop of Car of Carado, He was just the Lord has great plans, and he even said way back when that was nineteen in the eighties. He was saying that um, they know they're going to get this done. They know Luisa is a saint. They know more, and yet the devil does not want this to happen. So the devil causes difficulties. There's all there's confusion. I mean, the politics that go in the church are you know unfortunate at times, um, and we see it in every parish. We see it in every diocese. But Jesus says, I'm going to purify the church. I'm going to purify the world. I'm going to purify the priesthood. So he's, he's got plans to do this. And, and we have to know what Jesus said. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. We cannot get upset about what's going on. We pray more. God shows us who to pray for. If you hear a bad homily, that, that the Lord is saying, this is who I want you to pray for. He's my priest. And he doesn't know yet. Would you pray for him? Don't scream at him and yell at him and curse him. And it's pray for him. 
the, the priests, the bishops are going to be severely beaten at the day of judgment. Because if you mislead one little one, the best thing is a millstone around your neck. And if, if the priests are into modernism or whatever, you know, they're going to mislead people and God is not going to be happy. He, he, there is, there, it is a set plan that God has. The, the ultimate is the divine will. And when people begin to read this, study this, uh, your life cannot be the same anymore. It just can't. So by 24, 5, 20, 19, 28, my daughter, continue on. Do not want to stop. You must know that everything has been determined by, my, by the supreme will. Prayers, acts, pain, sighs, that the creature must do in order to obtain what we ourselves, what the triune God, want to give to the soul and that she longs to receive. So if the acts are not performed, the long for son does not rise from us, trying God, in the midst of the long human night of the human will. The human will is misery. We have to understand that. To understand the human will is what you do when you go to confession. This is what I thought. This is what I said. This is what I did. This is what I failed to do. And I don't want to live like this. I want to make a firm purpose of amendment to avoid every near occasion of sin. So God says, good. Now he thinks it's prove it. So he'll put us in situations where somebody what might annoy us, somebody might be uh, uh, making us worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, the negative. And he goes, so what are you going to do? You just said you want to live in the divine will. And we go, I will be peaceful. I will be joyful. I will be happy. He goes, prove it. <laughs> He's always saying that. He wants to see whether we can do it. And once we pass the test, we're free of it. That's the best part. Things in the past that might have bothered you in the divine will is just, it's just gone. Why? He's, your, he's healing you, continuously healing you. And so this is, this is the greatest time to be alive. The, the, the midst of the long night of the human will is coming to an end. This is going to stop. This is so great. To form the new day of the kingdom of the divine fiat. And this is why many times it happens that many acts and prayers are done and nothing is obtained. I have people saying that to me. I had one lady call me and said, I've had it with Jesus. No, it was really sad. She called me all the time and said, I trust in him. I believe in him. I hope in him. I know God's going to work. And then one day she had enough. And she said, that's it. That's it. And I said, well, let's pray the rosary. And she says, I'm not praying anything. I've done enough prayers. Like, God is, you know, we, this is what we do with God. Uh, could you bring me a cup of coffee? <laughs> I got my cup of coffee. See how good God is. No, it's, 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 he's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our Master. He's our King. He's our everything. We can't snap our fingers. It says right there. How many acts and prayers are done and nothing is obtained? But then because more of one little sigh, one little prayer, one obtains what so much is longed for. Why? It's completed. It's done. Like what, what, I've, what I've seen in, in the holy hour, say you've got something to do and you've got a holy hour and you, you're there at 58 minutes and say, ah, it's only two minutes, I, I can go. God goes, now I will give you the grace, but you didn't stay. You didn't, you didn't fulfill your promise. I will stay with you one hour. It's, it's don't compromise and, and continue on. You must continue what you're doing because this is what Jesus says. Was it perhaps the last act to obtain the deed of grace? No, it was the continuation of all the acts of all the prayers, as if it appears that it obtains, it is obtained through the last act. It is because that one last act was needed to complete the number established by God. Oh, I prayed for years and years, and God doesn't answer me. Keep on praying. That's why I say a, a, a mother's prayer, a father's prayer is so powerful that uh, you don't have to see the result. 
You know God is going to do this. Why? It's his prayer in you that you're praying. And you continue to pray whether you see it or not. With confidence, you're, oh, he's still doing this, she's still doing that. No, you continue praying. Lord, I know you're going to intervene. I know you're going to do this. I have confidence in you. It's your prayer that I'm praying. So when you pray, never give up. Never doubt. Don't stop, or don't stop uh, thinking that God is going to ignore you. It's not going to happen. He's, he, he listens to everything that his children tell him. And he knows the exact time that it will be happening. And, but we don't. We continue to pray. So Jesus says uh, very clearly, um, so if you want to receive the kingdom of the divine will, do not stop. Otherwise, since the long chain of acts that reaches up to the throne would be missing, you will not obtain what you want and what we, Triune God, want to give you. So pray, pray, pray. You hear that with Our Lady? She doesn't just say pray. She says it three times. Pray, pray, pray. Don't stop praying. Don't, and don't be negative. Uh, how many people do I hear? It's sunny day. Well, it's going to be rainy for a week after this. What's wrong with you? It's, it's sunny today. See, it's, it's, it's you know, you, you, you hear something, somebody say something, and they'll say, you know, God is my Savior, my Lord, my Emperor, which we don't need Our Lady. Well, that son of a, well, who does he think he's doing talking about Our Lady? He's on, he's on the path. He's going to know Our Lady. And that's a sign for you. Lord Jesus, show, show his, your mother to him or to her. Don't. It's, 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 our life has to be focused on what Jesus wants, what Jesus has planned, not, not what we think. We're nobodies, we're nothings. It says the wisdom of man is mere, mere, mere foolishness to the mind of God. Redemption did not come for many centuries because the patriarchs and the prophets found themselves with their acts in the night hours in the darkness of the human will. And from afar, they longed for the day, the day of the Messiah. As Queen Virgin Mary came and she formed the dawn, embracing, embracing all the night hours together, she made the day of the word arise upon earth and redemption was accomplished. She, she just said fiat all the time. Yes. When, when, she, when she was in the, uh, uh, the temple, she said yes. Leaving her parents, yes, at three years old. Leaving the temple at, at 15, she said yes. Going being engaged to Joseph, she said yes. When the, when the angel came to her, she said, how can this be? She goes, I, I, I'm living a life of virginity. Joseph's going to live a life of virginity. How can I become the mother? What do I need to do? That, that's what our lady said. What do I need to do to have God be the wish of God, the will of God fulfilled? And he said, she said, it will be through the Holy Spirit, the angel said. She said, fiat mihi, let it be done as you say. Then she goes, she goes to, uh, uh, to see Elizabeth. And, and she tells Elizabeth, Elizabeth knows she's pregnant. So she starts wearing the garment of a pregnant woman. And so what has happened? John, uh, uh, jo, uh, Zechariah is a high priest. The priests all knew her. And here she is walking around with pregnant clothes. And all of them said, well, she's not with Joseph yet. We thought she was a good girl. She had to... The, the, and then what happens? Years later, uh, at the temple, uh, they find Jesus lost in the temple, but he's talking to all the elders, and they're amazed by him. What, is, what does our lady say? Why did you do this to me and your father? And the, the high priest is going, oh, this is, this is the one that Joseph isn't the father. And then he says, did you not know I must be in my father's house? What did all the priests do? They ran away. <laughs> they all took off. Then years later, 15 years later, they said to him, you know, he, he says, your father is the devil. He says, we're no illegitimate breed like you, Jesus. Mocking, mocking his mother, mocking him. 
And they go, you, so you know my origins, do you? See that it doesn't matter what people say about you or think about you. The tr God knows the truth. And, and people slander people continuously. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you, are, you know you are a son of God. You're a daughter of God. And God's got plans for you. Our Lady was vindicated when Jesus rose from the dead. He is the son of God. God's got great plans. And he needs us to cooperate. And it doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter. See, the Lord loves us to seek and to find, to knock and to be open. He, he, he's looking for the souls who are longing for him. That's why he said to the apostles, I speak in parables to them so that they will not hear and understand. They will not see and comprehend. But to you, my brothers, he says, I will speak in depth of what, what the kingdom is about, of who I am. And even though he did that, they all abandoned him. They all abandoned him. So Jesus is saying now, I want to give you what I am bringing to the world for all of humanity who wants it. And he's given us the book of heaven. So as Jesus says, uh, uh, again, on embrace Embrace this kingdom. He says, Mary made the day of the word arise upon the earth and redemption was accomplished. Therefore, do not stop all the series of acts that are so necessary that there is a risk that if not all of them are performed, the desired good is not obtained. So he's teaching us, it doesn't matter what people think, say, or do. People say, well, don't you care what they think? No, I don't care. I really don't care. See, when I stand before God, he's going to say, what did you do? Not what did they do? What did you do? So we have to live that life of Jesus, of being freed of all worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. And then Jesus says, if I am really living in you, there is no purgatory for you. No purgatory. See, that Thomas Aquinas says the flames of purgatory are the flames of hell, but they're not everlasting. I, I don't want to get near purgatory. But Jesus is saying, in the divine will, there's no need for it. If, if Jesus is reigning in you, peaceful, joyful, and happy, there's nothing to worry about, nothing to be anxious about, nothing to be complaining about. 524, 526, 1928, the whole church is praying and there's not one soul who belongs to the church that does not recite the Our Father, asking even though many recite it without interest and wanting and asking for a kingdom so holy that the divine will be done on earth as in heaven. And since the interest is in the one who taught it by their reciting it, my interest, Jesus says, is renewed. I hear my own prayer asking, may your kingdom come so that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. However, if the creature in reciting the Our Father had the interest of wanting and longing for my kingdom, she would take part in my own interest and her human will would be fused in mine for the same purpose. But regardless of this, my will and my interest always run in each Our Father. So it's not, I've heard people say, I gotta get my rosary done. Our Father in heaven, I'm the king, I'm going to do Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord, I have my rosary done. It's, it's, pray the prayer that Jesus prayed. Pray the prayer that the angels said to Our Lady. It's, it's filled with, with peace, joy, and happiness. And that's the other thing too, if you have a prayer group, always start with a rosary. You don't have to do the whole, rosary but you know the at least one one set of mysteries and what that will do is it will quiet your brain to be able to hear what jesus is saying to you otherwise did i unplug the the the, the phone did i unplug the iron did i unplug the stove is the stove still on is the coffee pot still cooking 
you're 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 not going to be you're not going to be ready to hear Jesus. So the rosary helps us to be each day praying the rosary. Uh, it's each day is is to get closer and closer to Jesus and Mary. My beloved Jesus, who knows when this kingdom shall come? And he, G Louisa, my daughter, in order for redemption to come, it took 4,000 years because the people prayed and longed for the future redeemer. And it was the smallest one, the smallest number of people, a limited number. But those that belong to my holy church are more people and know how much greater in number than, than one little group. Therefore, the number shall shorten the time. So it was 4,000 years ago, uh, 4, 000, it took 4,000 years from the fall of Adam to the birth of Jesus. It's half that now. How do we know? John Paul II said, get ready for the third millennium. Get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. Everything's going to change drastically, drastically. The kingdom is coming. The evil one is going to be gone. We've been under his thumb for 6,000 years. His kingdom is coming to an end. What does that mean for us? Peace, joy, and happiness. What is that? That's heaven. That's how God wants us to live now, knowing with confidence that the goal is the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Therefore, the numbers are short in the time, more so since religion, this is the Catholic religion, is making its way everywhere. This is nothing but the preparation for the kingdom of my divine will. Volume 24, 530, 1928. I, Jesus, knowing what you, Louisa, want and ask for is the greatest thing. When we pray the way Louisa prayed, Jesus says, it is the greatest thing that you are doing. And your family doesn't want it. Your neighbors don't want it. Your coworkers don't want it. That's okay. I, I talked to some really great priests um, and uh, they... I say, let me tell you about Louisa. They want, I don't want to hear a thing about Louisa. And I go, like this one theologian in, in, in Italy, he came up to me and he says, how many, how many books does she have? You know, 20, 30, I think it's 36. And he goes, who's going to read 36 volumes? I said, I, I, it's the best thing in the world. And he goes, I have no, I have no time for this. And it's not that they're bad. This is a gift and, and Jesus said to Louisa, would you stand in the breach for all my children? This is what we're doing. We're standing in the breach for all of humanity. So when the illumination of conscience comes, there it is. They will say yes to God. And what is the illumination of conscience? It's the book of heaven. God isn't going to say, I got something completely different that I want to now teach the world. He's not going to do that. He's given to us. I mean, how? Who are we? We're nobodies. We're nothings. And he says, read this, study this, get ready for what I'm going to do. It's the plan. It's the map. And somebody said, I read the 36 volumes and I'm done. No, you're not. You've just begun. It's the reading the 36 volumes is a map. Now you're going to enter into this, this complex of, of, of apartments and visit every apartment. That's what, I, that's what he says to Louisa. There's, it's, Jesus has built this church, built this palace, built this new Jerusalem for us. Look at the beautiful things that the saints have built. What God has given to us is way, way beyond what the saint can do. It's because it's sharing in divinity. That's what's coming. This is, this is the most glorious time to be alive. It's so great to be Catholic. It's so great to have the sacraments and sacramentals. It's so great to spend time with our Eucharistic Lord. It's so great to pray the rosary, wear the scapular. This, the clothing of heaven. It's, Jesus says we're going to be clothed in divine nobility. Adam was naked because he lost the clothing of divine nobility. And Our Lady says this cloth that you wear, this little scapular, is the clothing of heaven. She's getting us ready to live this abundant life. So if you're not wearing the scapular, wear it. If you're not praying the rosary, pray it. We're, we're meditating on the life of Jesus with a, through, looking through the loving eyes of Mary to the Lord, our Savior, our Master, our King. It's, um, and it's, 
It's glorious. It's glorious. And now he's given us the book of heaven. And uh, like I said before, all we had was maybe we have sheets of paper. Now we have, I go to Luisa Picaretta.me, find a book, just go through the books and find one. These are just little um, themes that God is giving us. As you read this theme, uh, like, like, like uh, uh, Luisa and the Holy Spirit or, or uh, Luisa, the little daughter of the divine will, or, or even, like I, we mentioned yesterday, the, 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 the titles of Luisa. Who is this Luisa Picaretta that Jesus says 8,000, gives her 8,000 titles? Who is she? That's what we, like I said, we wrote it because, I mean, we put it together because of what um, one person said on the internet. Some people exaggerate Luisa Picaretta. Oh, really? <laughs> Do you want to hear Jesus exaggerate Luisa? Four, 400 pages of, of Jesus saying, this is my newborn. And then what does he say? This is going to be my children. So how many titles has Jesus given to us? I don't think many, if, I, if at all. But with Louisa, we have a law. With Louisa, she's the newborn. And if she's our little mama, uh, great things are coming. Amazing things are going to happen. So Jesus says, uh, the greatest thing, what you ask for is the greatest thing and the divine kingdom, which is not only you, Louisa, but all those who shall be in it. This is us in this kingdom. We may all be kings and queens. Why? Adam was the king of the earth. We have to learn how to do that again. It's giving all glory to God. I mean, the one, one of the times I was talking in Texas, um, I said, even the animals will obey you because that's what the animals did with Adam. And she says, well, I have all these bees, all these wasps, and I can't get rid of them. I said, well, just command them to leave. And then she, she goes home and I see her the next time and she says, you're not going to believe this. I said, bees, get out. You can't be here. This is my house. And they left. And I said, that the, you're, you're learning about the kingdom. It's it's we we are the kings and queens of the earth, and the evil one doesn't doesn't want us to know this. He wants us afraid. Be fra afraid. Be very very afraid. That's what the evil one says. No, I trust in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I hope in Jesus. I have confidence in Jesus. He's my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my King. I'm not going to be afraid of anything. See, it's, it's not to be foolish, but to know what God is asking. All will be kings and queens. If you knew what you were asking me for, heaven and earth are astonished and all are watching the braveness of your request, of my goodness, all paternal, that longs for you and smiles at you with total excess of love giving you more confidence in asking for it with more braveness. In fact, my daughter, since it is so great, so great a kingdom that I, God, must give, I, God, want to an entire people to ask me for it. And the first people is the whole creation. And by praying your round of creation in the midst of it, you, you move everyone, past, present, and future, to ask for the coming of the kingdom of my divine will upon earth. To see the job God has given us, the duty God has given us, the responsibility God has given to us, to ask for the kingdom continuously. Not only that, but to pray in his name, in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. So when you pray in the divine will, God hears all of humanity from Adam to the last person with your voice. Your prayers are powerful. They're Jesus' prayers in you. You're not making them up. Jesus is asking you to pray for this. But pray with such confidence, such trust, that you're going to see the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Volume 24, 6, 3, 19, 28. How sweet is the company of the loved one. 
It is full of unforgettable joy. That's us. That's Jesus and us, the loved one. How equally bitter is isolation. See, God does not want to be alone anymore. And that's why he gives us the Holy Eucharist. And he says, make the 33 visits to the Eucharist every day. That's what he asked Luis in volume one. What are the 33 visits? It's, it's to go to where you were baptized and genuflect in front of the Eucharist and say, thank you, Lord. Then go to where you were, you were um, uh, received first confession. And then go where you received first communion. Go to the church where you were confirmed. Go to the church where you were married. Go to the church where you been for funerals. If you've been in Rome, go to the Vatican. If you've been in Fatima, go to Fatima Church. Been in Garabandel, Medjugorje, Akita, uh, Guadalupe. Go to those churches and just kneel for a second and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's not, you know, well, how can I do these 33? Hey, this is impossible. Well, you made it impossible. It's easy. You just visit. Make a quick visit. You know, we remember was it a Holy Thursday night where we'd go to the seven churches? We did, I did this in one town. It was a race. Oh, we had, everybody had a car. Everybody raced to one church, ran in, knelt down. Thank you, Jesus, ran out. Ran, and it was, it was the most fun and the police really didn't like it, but it was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And, and see, God wants us, see, Jesus says, I love spontaneity. He says, I love it. I want to see what you're going to do. I, I want to experience your life. What are, you, what are you doing? What do you think? What are you saying? Like we mentioned it before, you know, you can be, you can be young or you can be a grown-up or a grump. You know, it's, it's get off my lawn. You know, it's uh, what, what, what God is asking of us is to be children. Children laugh 90% of the time. Adults laugh 10%. Be happy. Be joy-filled. I remember, well, you know, <laughs> you know, you ever get these machines where you can, it makes it sound like you're passing gas. I was, I, would, I had one of these machines laughing like crazy. And uh, this person said to me, basically, why don't you grow up? And I went, this is, this is fun. I mean, a child laughs at it, adult laughs at it, but you can't. What's wrong? It's just, just be happy. I mean, it's it's most important. It's most important to uh, jokes are a right, which and they got to be good jokes, you know. It's, but um, it's it's you, you you it's God wants us to be smiling. The uh, the the children are always smiling. You know, and this is what God is looking for in us. He's really asking us to do this. So the sweet company of the loved ones, it is full of unforgettable joys. How, how equally bitter is isolation, not enjoying the presence of the one who is so longed for and so loved for, the, for whom one operates. See, we're doing this for the glory of God. While we, Triune God, were forming the nature of Adam before infusing life in him, we acted like a father or a mother when their child was sleeping. Listen to this. He's not yet filled Adam with this, the Holy Spirit. He's, he's acting like a father or a mother when they're with their child is sleeping. And taking the tenderness by irresistible love, they long for, they kiss, they press their sleeping child to their bosom, and the child, because he is sleeping, knows nothing about it. If you knew, my daughter, how many kisses, how many loving squeezes we gave to the human nature before giving it life, it was the ardor of our love, that breathing over him, we gave him life, giving him a soul, and in breath, a heartbeat, the warmth to his body. So the breathing that you feel is our own. Do you, do, do you feel the Lord breathing in your breathing? Do you feel the Lord beating in your heart beating? He wants you to, he wants you to experience this. You, you will, I mean, it will happen. All of a sudden you'll realize 
That's not my heart beating. That's your heart beating. That's not me breathing. That's you, Jesus, breathing in my breathing. He wants this intimacy with us. And he's, he's trying to wake us up. He's trying to wake us up. So the breathing you feel is our own. The heartbeat that beats in your heart is ours. The warmth that you feel is the touch of our creative hand. And in touching you, infused warmth in you. And as you breathe, we feel our breath breathing in you. As your heart palpitates, we feel our heartbeat of eternal life beating in you. And as you feel the warmth, it is our love that circulates in you and continues its creative and persevering work, warming you. God is doing this. And we're separated from him, and he's tired of it. He says, I want you, one, one of the things I heard a long time ago, back in the 70s, look up into the heavens as, look up to the heavens, look to the stars, uh, as if in a mirror, and see God. That we are one with God in the universe. And he wants us to experience this. And he says, Louisa, when you look in the mirror, I want you to see me. The, uh, we have to attune our eyes, our ears, our heart, our mind, our soul to what God wants. It doesn't mean you are God, but he wants to see his reflection in you. He wants you to see his, your reflection in him. Volume 24, 6, 16, 19, 26. My daughter, it is indeed true that the supreme being made its marriage with humanity. This is the most important thing. The ring that you wear um, is, is a, um, God, it's, it's a proposal. It's a wedding proposal. He's saying, would you marry me? See, Jesus, Jesus is going to marry the church collectively, but he's going to marry each person individually. So the ring that you wear is a marriage proposal. Because he says, says heaven is the wedding feast. The first miracle happened at a wedding. Water into wine. Through the encouragement of Our Lady. That this, everything that's coming is to lead us to the wedding feast. In, in the feast of uh, St. Aloysius, it says we must meet the Lord with wearing our wedding garment. Let us meet the Lord wearing our wedding garment. This is what this is what's coming. The supreme being, the supreme being, made its marriage with humanity at the beginning of creation. It happened to a husband when his wicked wife induces him to separate in court. But in spite of this, an affection remains in his heart, and he thinks and he yearns that if this chosen one should change, who knows, I may once again be able to unite and bind myself with her with a bond of marriage. And therefore, he often lets news reach her ear through messengers that he loves her. That's our God speaking to us. We have separated ourselves from him. And he doesn't want that anymore. He wants this marriage to happen. So God did. Even though marriage with humanity was unbound in the divine court, he kept an affection. And though far away, he longed for the new bond of marriage with humanity. So much so that he did not destroy the palace that he had formed with so much so sumptuous magnificence nor did he take away from her the good of the sun that formed the day, that he left everything so that the very one who had offended him might make use of it. Even more, he maintained the correspondence by choosing from the very beginning of the world, now one of the, one of the good, now another, who are like messengers, these are the saints, and like many postmen, some brought little letters, some brought telegrams, some brought phone calls from heaven, in which it was announced that the faraway spouse had not forgotten her, and that he loved her, and that he wanted the return of this ungrateful spouse. That's, that's us. 
He's, he has such great plans for humanity that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. What, what God is going to do is going to astonish the world. I'm 24, 6, 29, 1928. Jesus made a wave of joy and of light come out of his sacred heart. The sacred heart, uh, this fire that's coming is the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary. That's why Our Lady says it's going to be good for some, but bad for most. If we do not want Jesus or Mary, it's going to be wailing and grinding of teeth because we're going to see this is what God wanted for us. And we said no. So the sacred heart of Jesus is the fire that's coming. The immaculate heart of Mary is the fire that's coming upon earth. And it's going to, the world's going to be consumed in love. Everything that is evil is going to be gone. That's what God wants us to get ready for now. That's why he gave us the book of heaven. Do you want to know what the illumination of conscience is? It's the book of heaven. Read the book of heaven, because Jesus says two things I'm going to show you. The who you are and who God is. That's the book of heaven. He's totally telling this our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our King, our all, and who we are. We're separated from him. And he wants to bring us back together. He wants this wedding feast to take place. Just, if you want to know what's coming, read the book of heaven. It's, gonna, it's going to get you ready for what everybody's going to go through. And let me tell you, I, I've been with, with a lot of people and talking to a lot of people. And the people that fool themselves the most is themselves. They really do. Yeah, I, 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 me, I, 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 me, me, e, I, I, I. No, that's nothing. I have, I have degrees. I have letters after my name. So do I. S O B. That's 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 souls on board. <laughs> It. it doesn't I, I was listening to this one person who spends hours and hours and hours becoming the best musician that he possibly can be and God is there but not the way God wants to be there and can you imagine standing before the throne of God and God says so what did you do I became Mr. Universe. You did, really. And, and there's, there's, there's no life there. It's our job is to enjoy the beatific vision. Our job is to be focused on God, God alone. And that's why, you know, spending time for the Blessed Sacrament is so essential. It's so essential. It's, it's our life. Everything changes. Everything changes. So uh, he says, the way of joy of light come out of his sacred heart and shall give more life to humanity with an emphasis of love. And he added, how I long for the kingdom of my divine will. It shall put an end to the troubles of creatures and of sorrows. Heaven and earth shall smile together. We haven't seen anything yet. Our feasts and theirs reacquire reacquire the order of the beginning of creation and shall make the veil uh, over, uh, make a place a veil over everything so that the feasts may never again be interrupted. This is, this is what's coming. Jesus says to us, I, I want to lift the veil so that you recognize the, the kingdom of God within you. I want to lift the veil and, and so what do we do? That's the wedding feast. The veil is lifted just before the marriage. See, he, things are coming. Things are going to happen that are going to be astonishing. And it's nothing to be afraid of. 
If you're afraid, you fall into the devil's trap. He wants you afraid because he's terrified. He wants you worried because he is worried to death. He is death. No, no, no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity. We have to really discipline ourselves to only talk positive. Positive. That's because Jesus is with us. One more. 524, 7, 19, 19, 28. Oh, that's a long one. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Then we'll do this. We'll start this at, at one o'clock. Is it one o'clock? Uh, two o'clock? Three o'clock? Four? Five o'clock? Six o'clock? Okay. So we'll, we'll end and, and we'll have confession, I guess, now. 1.30. Okay. Thank you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.